Hey everyone and uh, welcome back to my shop. I'm Jens Ensu and we're back shooting after a summer break. I'm uh, super happy to welcome you in my uh, leather workshop slash showroom that we finished over the summer. And um, I'm just really excited about actually working here. As a knife maker, I've been working a lot with leather. When I started making knives, I made mainly or only fixed blades and a lot of leather sheath. I've, I've always enjoyed working with leather. At the same time, I couldn't help but feel that every time I sat down to stitch a leather sheath, money would just pour out of my pockets because it was very difficult for me to charge enough for the full knife to actually justify the enormous amount of work that goes into a proper made leather sheath. However, and that is the same with much of what I do, I make for quality, not profit, which my accountant probably has an, op uh, an opinion about. <laughs> And of course, the finances are dictating a lot when you run a company with employees and all that. But, but I also enjoy making products that, that makes me proud, that makes me happy about the process. So today we're actually going to design and make a leather sheath for the Enso sheep's foot. As sold, the, the sheep's foot comes with a kydex sheath and I absolutely love Kydex for its technical aspects. It's a relatively simple construction. It is relatively easy to, to make a quality product. It does lack some in aesthetics though, and that's where I really enjoy leather. Back when I designed the, the sheep's foot 25 years ago, I actually designed it with Kydex in mind as well but also made leather sheaths for it. So we're gonna work with leather today and um, talk a little about my background with leather as well. So we started making these small leather slip pouches for uh, my Monte Carlo folder, a way to store the knife or a way to carry your knife in your pocket without using the clip and without scratching the knife. Then I designed the, the Astra modular fixed plate, also with a Kydex sheath, which to me, this makes so much sense for a product like this, but I also wanted to offer a way to to add leather to the mix. So it's basically the, the same design. It's a little different. Once you add a, an exposed edge to a leather sheath, you need to have an inlay in between the layers of leather that protects the, the stitch. Overall, it's the same design, made a little different. <laughs> This summer we introduced the, the sheep's foot and very fast one of uh, our customers figured out that it, this actually fits right in the sheath as well. And this size fixed blade, I really enjoy just dumping it in a pocket rather than putting it on my belt. I really rarely put a knife on my belt, except when I go hunting, then I add this to my belt. But these smaller sized blades, I usually just throw one in my bag or in my kit or jacket pocket. And that made me think, well, while we already make this product and it fits and it works well, and it allows you to turn the knife the way that you want. So it fits your need better. I figured I could make this product a little better by adding a pocket clip. The thing is that I wanted this not to be a belt sheath, but more a pocket sheath. So you could clip it to your pocket 
or in your bag, whatever. So what we did was we went ahead and got inspiration from one of my newer models, the Isola. And the clip that I designed for this knife is just my favorite clip. I've been making 3D milled clip out of solid chunks of titanium for a good number of years. And this is a little different because this is a mix of a milled clip and a bent clip. I started thinking that this could actually work well on the sheath. So what we did was we went ahead and designed a little insert for the sheath that gets sewn into the, the leather here. And then you can add the clip. Mind you, this is a prototype and if it will work or not, I have no idea what, <laughs> but uh, at least now we get everything on tape and you can follow the process. So with the majority of the work already done by having this sheath designed, the, the main focus now was to figure out exactly how to make the construction. I want this insert here embedded in leather so it doesn't scratch the knife. So one side needs to be two parts of leather, a cutting insert here or a stitch protective layer here and the front. So what I did was I, I found a drawing that we use to to cut the leather for the Astra and then added the sheep's foot and tried finding a position that would work well for, for, the, for the clip. Exactly how this will be stitched up, I, I'm not sure yet, but one thing that I did decide was that I want to have some kind of stitching down here to stabilize the positioning of the clip. That, that will see some torque and I don't want it flopping around in there. It will be glued together. A normal way of attaching this to, to leather would be to add some kind of rivet here, but I didn't really like that aesthetic on this project. So I will go with stitches. What I did was I added the clip to the design. I lined out the parts and had this been an entirely new project, I might have hand cut these pieces of leather out to stitch up a prototype. But being that this is a established project already where we are adding a clip to it, we'll go to the laser to cut out these pieces. So now I'm opening up the file that we have for the, um, the Astra pouch. I'm gonna import the, the clip file here and then start cutting the, the leather. So right now, being that this is a prototype, we have a bunch of smaller pieces of leather that we might as well use for these parts since we're only cutting a few pieces at a time. So I just picked up a bunch of leather bits here. We'll cut uh, the back side first and then the front later. I just fetched the uh, insert here just to see how that would work. And it sits pretty much flush, just raised just a little bit from the surface, which was my intention by using this thickness leather. And I think this will look super sweet. Next is to cut the front and the, um, and the cutting layer. Now you might be wondering why I'm matching these two colorful leathers, but anything that I make in the shop, I will dye it anyway. If this goes into production, we will get the same kind of leather. The, being this is a prototype, I'm okay with this not being matched. Mm -hmm. 
One of the benefits about cutting leather with a laser is the smell. You get that all for free. <laughs> and it does kind of smell like your pork roast got maybe two hours longer than needed in the oven. It's not, it's not the most pleasant smell, even though we have the, the dust or the smoke system on, but well, you can't win them all, right? Now I'm just trimming down this uh, scrap of leather to cut the next section here. I could have done it a little easier, but using uh, the scraps just when you make a prototype just makes a lot of sense. So I'm just trimming off the excess here with my Astra, of course. Please support this channel by visiting my website at ensoofdenmark.com. There's a link below. On my website, you can find products like the legendary Enso Ships. So we just got all the parts uh, laser cut. I cut enough for two sheaths, just in case I mess up, which there is a significant chance of me doing just because I don't work with leather every day, even every week or every month. So I need to reimagine some of these things, but I'm just gonna take a damn cloth and just wash some of the sud of the leather here. <laughs> gonna glue this in place with some contact cement and we'll take the process kind of as we go here. I can already see that I actually think it would look really cool if, if the insert is embedded into the leather so you can actually see it from, from the front. This is going to be the front of the sheath. This will be the cutting inlay here. And as you can see, the knife will fit in here, both edge left and right. This just allows both for ambidextrous carry, but also just you can, if you carry it like this one day, you can have it facing, the edge facing that direction, and the other day you can have it a different. And that it will also fit the current three different blades that I have for the Astra, the fork tip and the pry bar tip. So now I'm just gonna attach the insert here and with contact cement, you only have one go. The moment that this touches the leather, it sticks. So you need to be fairly accurate about positioning it. The next step is to glue these two pieces together. So in order for the contact cement to stick on this smooth side, I need to rough it up a little with this, just to get some traction in the leather. So right now I'm, I'm figuring out exactly how I can put a stitch near the embossment of the insert here with, without, of course, trying to sew into the titanium, which would end bad. And while I've been doing a lot of stitching on this machine here, it's still uh, a new machine for me because I use it relatively rarely. So every time I sit here, I have to remember, okay, how was it? that I did, what I did. And mind you that I was taught by YouTube how to use this. So I feel pretty confident in doing leather work, but with hand tools, not so much with the uh, sewing machine here, but it's getting there. I'm actually now using a little trick that I learned that I'm gonna put in three stitches without the thread in, because I want to lock the stitch by running back three 
stitches, but rather, rather than starting it out at the beginning, stitch three times, go back and stitch again. So you're actually stitching three times. I want to mark it out so it's only stitching two times. So this is um, the second prototype. Now I, I figure out this is a pretty good stitch. Um, for some reason I stitch another stitch or a stitch too long on this one and I will actually try and make it a little better on this one. But, you know, prototypes, right? Well, I did the exact same thing and, and stitch one stitch too long, but uh, I'm okay with that. This felt good. I'm getting back into the hang of it, I feel. So now I'm going to finish off these uh, loose threads by just melting the, the thread, trim it with the scissors and then, then glue the front part on and stitch that. <laughs> So this time I'm actually using a guide to keep the same distance for the stitch around the edge of the, the leather. I still marked out three stitches down to reverse, but then I will let the leather follow this steel rolling guide here to keep an even distance all the way around the stitch. That actually turned out uh, rather nice in my opinion. So I'm gonna stitch this up as the same way and then I'm gonna clean up the edges and figure out the next steps. So for the next step, I'm gonna grind the edges here just to clean up so we have a nice and an even surface here. Then trim the edges with, a, with an edge tool and then dye, polish, etc. And it's basically done. So now the dye and the lacquer here has dried up. I want to give it a coat of beeswax oil, something, and then install the clip. I don't like this stitching one bit. I think it, it, it makes what could have been a nice detail look a little messy. The main purpose of, of doing this prototype is to see if the size is right, if the fit is right, and then smaller details like this, it's easy to change that afterwards. Maybe um, the clip, the functionality of the clip, I can test that. I like the idea of that it works like this. Actually, this, a screw in this area might actually make it a little more secure. Like it will have a little bump on the right out of your pocket. Maybe it needs a little more retention in the sheath. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy about the, the result of this. And I think it goes well together with the knife itself. This will for sure turn into a product eventually. It needs a few steps more before I'm completely happy with it. Does it function? Yes. Does it function exactly like I wanted it to? Maybe not quite yet. Does it look exactly like I wanted? it? Not quite there yet. But I think I can say that I'm, I'm super happy about today's progress with this project. So once this video is out, I actually hope that I have a final product ready 
to sell along with the sheep's foot. And we will um, definitely cover that as well in a later episode. But uh, for now, I thank you for following me this far into the episode and uh, hit like, throw me a comment. I will answer all of them. Maybe not immediately, but I will answer all comments. Thanks so much. And until next time, take it easy. Please support this channel by visiting my website at ansoofdenmark.com. There's a link below. On my site, you can find products like the Anso puzzle set.